Today, I'm going to be sitting with one of the legendary Cirque du Soleil performers from the show, Alegria. Now, he's a fire knife dancer, and he's been performing since 1994, mesmerizing audiences all across the United States and across the world. Today, I'm gonna to sit down with him and find out what's his passion, what drives him, and what makes him so inspiring to people all across the world, including myself. And maybe he'll even teach us a few tricks. Let's go. Here we are with the one and the one. <laughs> <laughs> one, guys. <laughs> All right, so let's start with some simple stuff. Like, where are you from? From Hawaii. Hawaii. Yes, North Shore, Oahu. And yes. I imagine growing up there, part of the culture is surfing and luau, fire dancing. Like, yes. So this is something that was ingrained with you as a child. As right? a child, yes. It's very cultural, very cultural. It's a tradition. My family, my parents, and my grandparents were all performers, singers, dancers as well. Being born and raised in Hawaii, my parents were part of the Polynesian Culture Center. Oh, and yeah. so we got I've been to, by there, actually. Yeah, so we got to see a lot of that. <laughs> and the fire night dancing was, was, was what caught my eye as a young kid. So all I could remember from growing up was just whatever I could get my hands on, I would just pretend I was spinning it. Man, it would be either straws or sticks or broomsticks or just anything I could. That's all I wanted to do was just spin. But they were just like, okay, if that's what he wants to do. That's what he wanted to do. So. Interesting, because you know, in different cultures, they grow up kicking a soccer ball yes. or throwing a baseball. And in your yep. culture, that's it's different. It's yes. definitely an interesting thing. It's something that I found, like just being around you and seeing you do it, that has inspired me to do it. But uh, we'll get into the inspiration stuff later, <laughs> and we got a lot more stuff about the act. I put out a poll to see what other questions people had for you, and ton I got so many responses. I can't ask you all the questions, but I do have a few people that they didn't even just ask questions. They just said, "Man, I shook his hand one time, and it." It changed my day, it changed my life. Like just seeing you perform and then getting to meet you. I can speak for myself because that's <laughs> how I feel. And his, his energy and the way that he approaches things is just from a very kind hearted place. It's a family thing for me, you know, and uh, growing up in Hawaii, uh, blue collar family. So, you know, poor, but uh, rich in culture. And a lot of it for, for me is just any, any way we could express who we are and, and what we can do. You know, we learn to share no matter what we mm. have and stuff. I learned, you know, especially from an example from my dad. So anyone we come in contact with, that's how we want to do We want to be able to, to teach and share what we have, but at the same time, we do unto others that they will do unto us. Simple, but a beautiful mm. philosophy. And I know you guys want to know about the fire. We're going to get to that in a second. But how did we get to the fire? The fire wasn't really original part of, like, your culture, right? This was something that Hollywood brought on? It, it was, a, and plus it's, it's, it comes from the culture of Samoa. I'm actually full Tongan, so ah. the opposite of, uh, uh, which was originally performed in um, ceremonials. Uh, if you've actually seen the movie Moana, mm -hmm. and it was performed by the women, actually. Really? It was a traditional performance performed by the women to show respect and to own who they are and to represent who they are. Uh, from that, it was actually brought on by a godfather of Fire Night Dancing, Freddie Latuli. He brought that to Hawaii and was actually filmed in Hollywood. So the night dancing, it, it was, it's a weapon used by, by the Samoans back in the days and in the culture of protecting themselves and being able to defend themselves or, or hunting. It was brought into Hollywood in the 1950s and they added fire. So. That to give the visual effect yeah, the of visual what's happening. Of what it's happening. And it got modernized as being a dance, and then it was picked up as a, a tradition in Hawaii as a luau. I've been to Hawaii quite a few times, and each time I go, like I put a luau on my list. For me, it's it's the fire knife at the end. I mean, <laughs> yes. the drinks and the Kahlua pork are pretty awesome as well, but unless you can understand the story, which just like Cirque, you don't necessarily always know what the story is, and you use your imagination to interpret what you're seeing. Um, but in any case, if it's entertaining, if it's bringing you kind of inspiration, then you have an effect from it. As we get into the performing aspect of your career, we know that you've influenced your audience mm -hmm. and your fans. How or have they even influenced you? Without the audience, there wouldn't be who, it wouldn't be us. Right. The audience is the most important thing in the show, you know, and to be able to thank them and it's a way of thanking them for being there. That's my hope every time I perform is being able to give back. And I will say, there've been a couple times that I've actually sat out of the show to watch and you can definitely see the interaction that is going back and forth between One and the audience, and it's a genuine interaction. It's not a manufactured or acting performance. It's it's a genuine feeling that comes from inside, and, and the audience feels that. And when the audience feels it, they can reciprocate, and that's that give and take that I think you're talking about. So you were part of the original mm -hmm. Alegria. How did you feel coming back? I mean, it's an iconic show, and for it to come back is already telling of its own story and, and telling of, of, of how big this show was. Alegria will be Alegria no matter who who was was a part of it and is part of it. We're all one family, yeah. you know, no matter old or new and stuff and it, it's 
it's just a blessing, I think, for us to be able to continue that and continue to share. Let's get into the, some of the stuff that people want to know about, like the details of the fire. Is it real fire? Yes, it's real fire. I used it before. <laughs> the fuel that we use is, is camping fuel. So it's Coleman it's fuel. It's what you use for camping. It's but don't try this at home. Yeah, it's <laughs> it burns at a, at a lower temperature, but it's still hot. And it's still real. And fire, <laughs> yes, fire is real and fire is, for me, fire is alive. I don't control the fire. The fire has a life of its own and I follow it. If you can respect the fire, the fire will respect you. And there's parts in the act too that you can see where you are laying on top of the fire. Yes. And the fire is not avoiding you, but it's not attacking you either. So no. it's it's doing its thing. <laughs> yes. It's a mutual respect. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about fire knife dancing. Yes. These are knives. These are actual metal blades. They are machete. Can they yeah, cut machetes. you? Unfortunately, I had this the other day. <laughs> so, yes. so yeah, you can get cut and burned at the same time. So you won't get burned <laughs> without a cut. There's one part of the act where you're laying on your back and you put the fire on your feet. Yes. What is the trick there? There's no trick. There's no trick. There's no trick. You're not wearing like some special protection on the bottom of your feet. No, I purposely burn my feet. So it's actually burnt. <laughs> purposely My bur feet is burnt. <laughs> uh, they'll, they'll be blistered and, and such hard just for the time of the shows. And then like, uh, I don't know, my body heals quick. So burn after burn. <laughs> so that you got to see guys. <laughs> <laughs> Have there been any accidents on stage other than like some minor scrapes, cuts? Burns? Yes. Uh, fortunately in 94 in Santa Monica. Yeah, I had a close to third degree burn on and? my calf actually half yes it was beginning I, I left my leg to go under and and it, it uh, the ball actually touched right. my calf so the gas transferred from that and stayed on my calf I didn't even feel it and I kept I kept continuing why you have the fire on your feet why you sometimes burn yourself or do you go through a meditation process is there something that like prevents you from feeling that or is it just are you so focused and engaged with the audience that you just flow I think it's like what you say it, it does flow um, honestly it's a it's tough because sometimes when adrenaline takes over, you know, you technically don't feel a lot of things. How do you determine when to take the fire off your feet? I don't know. When it's time, it's time, I guess. <laughs> but, there you go. I guess so then what advice would you give to an aspiring knife dancer or even just uh, a performer? Believe. Believe in, in, in what you want. Believe in the idea of what you want to become. You know, it's like if, if it's in your heart, if it's in your blood, you can accomplish anything. I mean, there's, there's, nothing, that, there's nothing more that I can teach or train you more than what you can believe in. I think that applies for a lot of, uh, I mean, everything in life. That's one thing that I've noticed amongst uh, the cast here mm -hmm. and uh, people that I know that are at a high level of what they do, whether it's business or investing or real estate, whatever. Yeah. It's not that they just got lucky or they, they had a good coach. It's that they had that desire, that yes. determination, that discipline mm -hmm. to continue pushing through because there's always going to be adversity. There's always going to be obstacles. There's, there's always, gonna always be room for problems. improvement. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't like perfection. I, I will not perfect my craft. I mean, I never have a perfect show because I always, I know that there's always room for improvement. I have another comment. It's, it's not a question. It's a comment from a friend of mine. He actually said, thank you for bringing me and others so much joy through your performance. And I think that just kind of speaks to almost anybody that's ever seen him. Like the, the applause, the standing ovation, the, the response that you get from the audience. This is a privilege. You know, it's a privilege to do what I do and I'll never disrespect that. I mean, like everybody sees me, I go out there just before I enter. It's always like I, I, give, I give it a kiss, I give it a praise of that and I touch you know, the big talk because it's magic happens in there and it's just respect to the stage as well. And you never know who or, you know, how many people we, we will inspire or touch. It shows, it definitely shows, man. And the way that he is backstage, like just embracing everybody before their acts, sending good energy and love and protection in a way, it's, it's refreshing. I'm very lucky and fortunate to be able to work on this show with you. I'm super grateful. And I've said it to you off camera, yes. but it, it's, it really, it's it's been great and uh, I really can't wait to finish the city with you like no, I know and I get to share the stage so so one of the thing um, I get to share the stage with him now and he taught me some things so now I'm uh, one of his backup dancers <laughs> and uh, you think you could teach uh, our audience uh, a few tricks real quick uh, sure let's do four circles for them we'll do four circles so we're gonna do one circle two circle three circle four circle continue yes there you go oh so we know that this is your last city what what's next yes. what is next for the one and only my goal is to be able to coach and mentor other finite dancers i'm hoping to be able to open up more avenues more 
uh, platforms for Fire Knife Dancers to be in big shows like this. In all of the Cirque shows, how many Fire Knife acts are there? There's only two. There's, There's two. This Alegria and O. I'm the choreographer creator of both shows, both Fire Knife, so I wish there would be Fire Knife dancing in every show. I mean, I feel like it will be it will be a, an homage to to what this this act can do. You know, it's it's amazing. It's a beautiful you know? art. It's yeah. it's captivating. It's energizing, and it has so many levels to it. Yes. It's it's not just a spectacle. Mm -hmm. It's it's got the history. It's got yes. the heritage. It's got everything in it. And it, uh, if you don't get a chance to see him in Vancouver, you'll get a chance to see him. He'll be performing. He'll be coaching all over the world still. Um, I'll leave his information down in the description below. You guys can contact him if you want. Man, no, I appreciate this. Super yeah. appreciate you. Thank you. Everything. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me. <laughs> Seriously, it's been an, it's an honor. And uh, yes, thank you. So thank awesome. you. So awesome. Man. Well. Thank you guys for watching. Go have an awesome day and be good to each other.